Announcing the 2018-2019 season. The Premier Health Broadway Series. School of Rock. It's time. Finding Neverland. When your feet touch the what if flying were as easy as believing? Finding Neverland. The musical the Boston Globe calls fun, touching, and gorgeous. In this place. An enchanting story of how Peter became Pan. Finding Neverland. Rogers and Hammerstein's The King and I. What audiences come to expect from a Rogers and Hammerstein musical is sort of great music, and I think they expect a kind of sweeping big story. Because you see the position of women in traditional cultures and whether or not that can be changed or transformed. And they, it's unexpected. And Anna is a real advocate for women and their position in society and fighting for her own position. To take it on the road, you have to really go back to a proscenium, which is the picture frame of the theater. In a curious way, we found that it actually makes it stronger than it was at Lincoln Center. That you're much more aware of this kind of metaphorical wall that we have across the back of the set, that this was a closed society. On one level, it's a form of escapism because it does take you to a different time and place. The visuals and the storyline is uh, exotic and romantic. I think in every project that you do that's classical, there's these iconographic moments that need to be there. And I think the audiences want to see that hoop skirt and want to see Anna dance. On Your Feet. I came to Miami when I was two years old. My mom kind of replanted us. Everything that they did was to keep alive the culture that they thought that we would go back to. This is a story that people can relate to. There's immigration, there's the troubles getting produced, there's racism, there's a million stories to be told. We have to fight a lot at the beginning of our career. You have to change your name, you have to change your sound. Well, life is never easy, the rest is unknown. Life can change in one minute. Singer Gloria Estefan is in critical condition tonight. Gloria Estefan and her band were on a tour bus when it collided with a tractor trailer. After I had broken my back, music was the biggest thing that got us through our life, and hopefully our music can also inspire other people as well. They prove that to this day in America, you can dream big, and if you're willing to sacrifice it all, there's a chance. We have a story to tell that I think will inspire a lot of people.
Les Mis. There's something about this material that will work, whether it's in a schoolroom, in a concert hall, or on the stage. And that's very, very rare for any musical. It requires truth. You obviously have to be able to sing it, but truth and passion is what matters, and imagination. very moment you're writing something, if you don't feel that you're writing the most beautiful thing in the world, you never start. It felt like we were ourselves writing the novel again in a different medium. And when we got to the end, we thought that we had something that was worth playing to other people because we enjoyed listening to it ourselves. We've been doing the show now for a few years and there's been so many companies but every production is unique and, and it, that's I think is what's so wonderful about it. What's new is who's playing what role and what they bring to that. The cast get to stand on stage and ask questions of the audience. You know, what would you have done in our position and, and what do you want to be different in your world? This is a novel that's about the human condition. This can exist at any time, anywhere. It's who we are. I love him. I love him. I love him. Most of what we're trying to find is, is the stakes of the production. It's an epic tale and you're dealing with literally life and death constantly from top to bottom, all the way through the whole thing. Ultimately, the piece at its heart is about redemption. And, and I think from Victor Hugo's time uh, to now, we see things that get in our lives that really break us at times. And I think what the show does is it shows you that the human spirit is greater than that. All this has made complete very different new productions. Very exciting, you know, to see another production of that caliber happen during your lifetime. It doesn't happen often. None of us did it in order to change people's lives. But the show has changed people's lives, not only our own, but far more importantly, it's something that people have clung on to and will celebrate for as long as people ever go to the musical theatre. Waitress. The Projects Unlimited Star Attractions, The Wizard of Oz.
ever a waste there was. If ever a weather a waste there was, the Wizard of Oz is one. Because, 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 because of the wonderful things he does. We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the musical. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer had a very shiny nose. And if you ever saw it, you would even say it goes. All of the other reindeer used to laugh and call him names. They never let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer games. A pack full of toys means a sack full of joys for millions of girls and for millions. Chicago. Ladies and gentlemen, you are about to see a story of murder, greed, corruption, violence, exploitation, adultery, and treachery. All the things we hold near and dear to our hearts. Come on, baby, why don't we paint the town? And all that jazz, I'm gonna rouge my knees and roll my stockings down. And all that jazz, start the car, I know a whoopee spot. Where the gin is cold, but the piano's hot. It's just a noisy hall where there's a nightly brawl. And all that jazz. And the return of the Book of Mormon. One of the hottest shows on Broadway, Book of Mormon. Runaway hit. The creators of South Park. You would be well advised to book your reservations now. A huge smash success spreading across the country. And now the Book of Mormon has opened in London's West End. My love for musicals came from Rodgers and Hammerstein and watching all the classics on VHS or at the local, you know, community theater. When Trey and I and Bobby started talking about Mormons, that aesthetic and that kind of, the, the choice that the church makes to make that kind of their public image seems to just fit with musical theater. The Guardian says, in reality, there are very few things you actually have to do before you die. They include, call your mom more often, recycle, See the Book of Mormon. I wanted something happy and optimistic. Let's try and make a really cool traditional musical first. It's not just cheesy singing and characters breaking into song. It's about a positive, uplifting experience. And I hope that the audience is, you know, feeling entertained. <laughs> and the Tony Award goes to the Book of Mormon. The Book of Mormon! I think the night would be a big disappointment if we didn't thank our co-writer who passed away. Mr. Joseph Smith, the founder of the Mormon religion. You did it, Joseph, you got the Tony. Ben Brantley of the New York Times says, the Book of Mormon is the best musical of this century. I've never heard such roof-shaking laughter cheers Vanity Fair. Entertainment Weekly calls it the funniest musical of all time. This Book of Mormon is so good, it makes me angry. <laughs> Hello. 
Get your tickets now.